What you want from this time of year? From October is the very best. Deep left center field, tie game! There is a reason why they are in the World Series. We're playing against one of the best teams in the league. Swung on and missed. That's the 11th strikeout for Kershaw. The two best teams in baseball going against each other in the World Series. The postseason heroics of Justin Turner continue. But even when you get the very best teams, the very best players, the very best stories, Struck him out. Verlander again tonight, absolutely dominant. I knew that we had an opportunity here to do something special. Remember, you're not guaranteed anything else. It's gone! It's gone! You're not guaranteed what they gave us. Oh my goodness! You have got to be kidding me! And it's just like, dude, what is going on? This game will not go quietly into this good night. Wow! What an epic World Series. These fans are ringside at one of the best boxing matches they'll ever see. Trading blows. You like that? You like that? Yeah, there might have been a few who could have said they saw it coming. But with this unforgettable ride, it wasn't just about who won. Gonzalez hits one in the air in the left center field. Back at the wall and is gone. It was about how it all unfolded. What an unbelievable turn of events. There was no way to see this coming. It was unbelievable. So many swings of emotion. First pitch from Kershaw. And he lifts this one. Left field. Arriba. Gurriel. We're tied. Unbelievable. Is this game really happening? 12. 12. This surreal game continues. Every moment is big. The drama is at an all-time high. Astros win it. Astros win. Astros win. 13 to 12 and 10. I literally could have cried. That's how emotional I felt. Springer homers for the fourth straight game. This series too good to end in six. Dodgers force a game seven. And all the while, every moment of that ride gave a struggling city hope, faith, and the simple, glorious distraction that a game like baseball can offer. It became personal, more so than normal, because anytime you're connected with the city that you're playing in, it makes it all the more meaningful. Harvey did that for us. The final game of the season here in Houston, a city that needed an emotional boost after Hurricane Harvey, and boy, did they get one tonight. For a lot of people going through a rough time, I think to give them something to cheer for and something to be happy about means a lot. And you can really create this special bond between the city and a baseball team. We really hope we can bring them joy through this time and hopefully win a championship for them. Yes, we knew everything we had coming into October. Battling to the absolute end. The best teams, the best players, the best stories. We know but we didn't know for sure we'd get just what we'd ever want from a World Series. This. That was crazy! That was mad crazy! The scene here in Los Angeles, it is beautiful here today. Not a cloud in the sky. It's also 104 degrees. <laughs> it is easily the hottest for a game one in a World Series. It's steaming hot, as you may have heard it. But we are ready for baseball here in LA. I'm a small town kid from Britain, Connecticut. I'm playing in game one of the World Series in 2017 out in LA. It does show, at least for me, that dreams can become true. This is what it's all about. Kill it. We're going to kill it. World Series, we're ready. What's up? We're ready. We're ready. You guys see all ready? You see the Mohawk? The match is his batting glove. Oh, my God. Why? You need to fire that guy. <laughs>
Now you buy me. Oh yeah, this is the big dance, dude. It's game one of the World Series, Dodgers and the Astros. This is something that you dream about. And when you only get to pitch once every five days, it makes it more special. I want to take in everything, the atmosphere, the ballpark, everything, you name it. All right, who's not ready on a hot night in Southern California? We're in Los Angeles, home of the Dodgers. It's now baseball's answer to a heavyweight championship, the best of seven. We've got a great matchup for you tonight with Dallas Keuchel on the mound for the Astros, and of course, Blake Kershaw will be on the mound on regular rest. Two 100 plus win teams. First time that's happened in a World Series since 1970. Congrats, brother. Thank you, it's awesome, it. man. It's fun to watch you guys. Kershaw's on the rubber, Springer's in the box, and away we go. You can imagine how Kershaw feels now. He's got Sandy Koufax sitting in the front row watching him pitch. This is what he played his entire career for, this opportunity to start game one of a World Series. He's a three-time Cy Young Award winner. He's been an MVP, and he strikes out his first batter faced in a World Series, one away. Kershaw is so tired of hearing the question thrown his way about why it hasn't come together for him in the postseason. Best regular season pitcher in a long, long time. But coming into this year, 18 postseason games, a record of four and seven, and an ERA of over four and a half. That's stunning for a guy with as good a stuff as Kershaw has. After Springer, Bregman, and Altuve, 2-0 on the way, and a swing and a high fly ball to left field. Hernandez drifting back. He's got room, and he's there to make the catch. Now, Jose Altuve. The littlest giant in baseball. Left side, Seeger to his right, long throw, perfect inning. One, two, three for Clayton Kershaw. Clayton Kershaw sets down the Astros in order. And now here's Dallas Keiko. Man, has he been good. Chris Taylor will lead it off for the Dodgers. That is scooped and lifted way out of here into left. Bang! Starts the World Series for Chris Taylor. Chris Taylor on the first pitch. Homers to give the Dodgers the lead. He looked to do damage early in the count. He jumps on a sinking fastball and hits a no doubter to left. I didn't know that he was going to come out hacking the first pitch, so I threw a four seam fastball just to try to get ahead. And it just so happens that he was locked in more so than obviously I was and put one on the board for, for the Dodgers. Chris Taylor had faced Dallas Keuchel three times previously, struck out all three times. Chris Taylor's leadoff home run set an unquestionable tone for the night. The latest highlight in his improbable season. I started the year trying to make the team and to be here in the World Series, it's unbelievable. I never could have imagined being in this situation. So just an awesome feeling to come through for my team like that. DK got ambushed on a first pitch heater. You know, as a catcher and pitcher, whatever, you got to score to win anyways. Here is Turner. 2-2. Two, two. Swing and a miss. Chase the high one, and Turner is retired. One away. First strikeout for Keiko. That is a great bounce back after that leadoff homer. This game can humble you really quick, but nothing changed. It was the same game plan. I still have to go out and do my job and make sure the guys behind me are ready to do their jobs as well. Correa, shortstop, gobbles it up, slings across in time, and the inning is over. Now into the second. And the Dodgers got a really rested and ready ace. Cole strike three. Guriel down on strike. And Clayton Kershaw appears on here early. Wow. Nasty stuff for Kershaw. Wow. It's unbelievable. His command, you know, fastball, slider, curveball. He had it all working for him. Swung on and missed strike three. Five strikeouts for Kershaw through three innings. 
Kershaw's dominance was calling to mind a Dodger World Series legend of another age. But in the fourth, his first mistake cost him big. This one's belted. Left field, sending Kike back. He'll look up. Gone! Ties it up. Alex Bregman. Kershaw leads it up. And Bregman ah! says hello on the World Series stage. For Clayton Kershaw, it's been a lot of yeah, but a lot of unbelievable regular season success. Yeah, but in the NLCS, he struggles. Yeah, but in. Well, he's pitching brilliantly here tonight. Hey! On the outside corner, strikeout number six. Now the 0 2. Breaking ball, call strike three, strikeout number seven. That was a curveball with vengeance. Kershaw's been swinging on this. He gets Doriel again. Bregman homers on the first mistake from Kershaw. He bounces right back and strikes out three in a row. Hey, Briggs. You only hit homers on Cy Young guys or what? It's unbelievable. Two off sale. Yeah. Pretty good ones in the book in the postseason. Game one moves to the bottom of the fifth inning. Astros. And Dodgers tied at one. Chris Taylor hit Dallas Keuchel's first pitch of the game for a leadoff homer. And he has settled in great since then. DK pitched amazing. Kept him off balance. Was sinking, cutting it. Swing and a miss at a ball in the dirt. Picked up by McCann on the tag to fly for out number one. Leading up to the game, I probably had a little bit more nervousness, but it was a, it was a good nervous energy just because when you're facing a perennial Cy Young candidate and MVP guy like Kershaw, it makes it more fun. This has been a classic duel. Keichel on the ground. Charging Bregman fields it on the short hop. The second for one. Altuve on the first. That's two. Third double play that the Astros have turned tonight. Kershaw been striking everybody out. One on and miss strike three. You know I'm loving it. That's the 11th strikeout for Kershaw. Blake Kershaw is the first Dodger pitcher to get to double digits in strikeouts in a World Series game since that man, Hall of Famer Sandy Koufax. You have two of the best pitchers in the game competing against each other. You had that feeling that whoever got the big hit was going to win the game. Bottom of the sixth inning. Well, here's Chris Taylor, who made the most out of his first swing of the game. I'm thinking about what I want to do. I want to be careful, but not too careful to pitch around him. And just so happened that he laid off pitches and walked to first base. That's the first walk given up by either pitcher tonight. It seems like whenever we have guys walking, you know, it seems like the guys behind them always step up. And here is Turner, who has been unconscious in the postseason. JT has that knack for coming through in the biggest situations. So if I can get on base for him, I know that's a good thing. <laughs> The scenario called to mind recent history. A two-out Taylor walk, bringing Justin Turner to the plate. After all, it was a lot like the ninth inning of game two of the NLCS, when the Dodgers' third baseman, clutch all postseason, had delivered big against the Cubs. Turner in the air to center field. That ball's hit well. This is way back, and it is gone! It is a walk-off home run for Justin Turner! Justin Turner is turning into one of the great clutch postseason hitters. JT just has that pulse for that big moment. And he shoots one right through. Base hit. Another run is in. Another RBI for Justin Turner. Justin Turner's on-base percentage is the highest on-base percentage in postseason history. I mean, like, nobody can get him out. He grew up a Dodger fan. Now he's part of Dodger history. Now Justin Turner. Good pitch down and in. He's a tough at bat. I don't think he threw one pitch to me that the whole ball was on the plate. It's a grind. Takes a strike over the outside corner, strike two. Turner didn't like it. After that, he's just going to battle mode, and I spread out a little bit and just try and find a way to hit a ball hard somewhere. Here's the one, two. He stays put, and a fly ball to left field. It's deep. I hit it good, but didn't necessarily get it completely on the barrel, and, and I hit it pretty high. I had my head down just listening for the fans to let me know what happened. Turner 
makes it three to one Dodgers in game one. Well, it's hot. The ball's going to travel. I made the pitch that I wanted to make. He got just enough of it. And when you're strong enough to get the ball up in the air in a hot night like that, um, he came out on top. The postseason heroics of Justin Turner continue. And so did an historic showing by Clayton Kershaw. The last pitcher with 11 or more strikeouts in a World Series game one was the great Bob Gibson in 1968. Trish is the best. There's no way around it. No time of the year, doesn't matter. He's he's the best on the planet. And what he did in game one was incredible. That was one of those nights that I'm sure he'll never forget, and I sure won't. And Kershaw is through seven dominant innings. By the looks of it, the end of the line and a mighty fine line for Clayton Kershaw tonight. Kershaw was outstanding. Seven innings, one run, three hits, no walks, 11 strikeouts. And he'd thrown only 83 pitches. But it was still hard to argue against going to a Dodger bullpen on a dominant role. This Dodgers bullpen did not allow a run in 17 innings against the Cubs in the five game NLCS. Right in Bellinger, and that's off of the Astros. Morrow works a one, two, three, top of the eighth. Top of the ninth, Kenley Jansen on to shut the door. The 2 2 from Jansen. Call strike three. At some point, the Astros are going to have to dent that bullpen. Altuve pops it up. This is going to do it. Taylor gives way to Puig. He's underneath it. He's there. He's got it. And the Dodgers take game one of the World Series, winning it three to one. Heichel was really good tonight. They had two big swings, we had one. They had a walk right before one of their big swings. It's 3-1, we get to game two. I mean, there's, it's no more complicated than that. So these are two incredible teams that, that are going to fight. Seven game series, you got to win four. But tonight's about Kershaw. Yeah, baby, yeah, baby, yeah, baby. Definitely feels good to say it was the World Series, and it feels good to say we're 1-0. And, um, you know, we got to come back tomorrow and do it again. Sandy Koufax told me today, you know, 162 is work. Uh, once you get to the playoffs, it's fun, and uh, I thought that was a pretty cool way to look at it and, and agree with him 100%, just to be in the moment, take a second to step back and look around and soak it in. It's, it's pretty special. Pretty good way to get it going. Not too bad. Four teams have taken a 2-0 lead in the World Series. 43 of those 54 have gone on to win the World Series. Dodgers, winners of the first game of this World Series, and tonight they turn to another left-hander, Rich Hill, on the mound. It'll be Justin Verlander on the mound for the Astros. You couldn't have asked for much more from Justin Verlander than what the Astros have got. When you go into a playoff series, best of seven, you always think those first two games when you're the road team, you want to at least get one of them. And so that's what the Astros will be trying to do tonight. AJ, um, down 1-0, how much pressure is there tonight? Um, well, there's always pressure in the World Series. I think our guys understand, uh, especially after game one, I mean, getting a win here is huge. By any measure, Adversity was nothing new to the Astros going into game two. They'd been surrounded by it in unfathomable ways that had nothing to do with baseball since early September. And then in the playoffs, back on the field, they'd had their backs put against the wall. That is the ball game. The Houston Astros come to New York and lose all three and go back to Houston needing to win twice to go to the World Series. We've got to play game six. And so the message of this team is going to be keep keep fighting the fight. This series isn't over. We, we met Houston. We were down 3-2. But well, we said, man, we can win tonight. We can win with Justin on the mound. What a pitch. And Verlander's just toying with him. The Houston Astros beat the New York Yankees, forcing a game seven. When we get to game seven, we feel like we're going to, we're going to bring it home. And he rips it. Go! Springer says he's got it. 
The Houston Astros win the pennant. This team, the city, these fans, we showed how resilient we were. For our team to, to come home, backs against the wall, and you know, to come out and play how we did, you know, it, it shows a lot about the character of the guys on our team. The Astros needed some different things to turn around in game two at Dodger Stadium. And at the top of the list was the struggling bat of George Springer, even if the outfielder hadn't lost any of his self-belief. Why do that every time? Why just do that every time? Rick hit incredible, and you didn't even swing hard. No, I'm not going to swing hard ball, today. That ball almost got out of the stadium. I'm not going to swing hard today. I believe I can hit. I believe I can hit. Michael, put backwards hat for BP today. I think that baseball is really hard how you deal with failure, how you deal with, uh, you know, with, with some tough days. But you start fresh today. George Springer has way more good days than bad days and way more good stretches than bad stretches. So I'm going to continue to encourage him. He's going to lead off. He's going to be a big part of, of an offensive approach tonight against a really good pitcher. But as the game got underway, it was the pitchers who again seized control of things. Hill delivers. Swung on and missed strike three. Swing and a miss. Swung on and missed strike three. Throws him with a breaking ball. Peterson goes down looking. Two exceptional pitchers on the hill tonight. Rich Hill and Justin Verlander each started strong. But in the third, the Astro bats started to show signs of life. Here's Bregman. Bregman punches it into shallow center field. Taylor coming on. Dodge can't get it. The ball caroms right to Peterson. So the Astros finally break through. They lead one to nothing. And if it hadn't been for the bill of his cap, that would have rolled all the way to the wall. Where that could have been a nightmare for the Dodgers. Verlander, meanwhile, stayed perfect through four innings and got two quick outs in the fifth. But then Jock Peterson finally solved it. A high fly ball to right center. It's got a chance, and it is gone. Peterson has just hit the biggest home run of his life. And one inning later, the Dodgers did more damage. When Chris Taylor worked a walk, and then Corey Seager stood in against the big righty. It's deep, Gonzalez to the wall. Gone, a home run! I hit it really good. Um, kind of knew it right away. Got really excited. Don't normally show emotions, but that one was fun for sure. Seager, Dodgers lead, three to one. I decided to go fastball away. Executed it pretty well, and Seager hit a pretty good pitch. I mean, that's, that's baseball. Sometimes that happens. You gotta tip your cap. The score stayed 3-1 after seven, with the Astros running out of time and baseball's best closer lurking. You can just tell the way that each game has gone, that two-run lead seems like five, because at some point the Astros are going to have to dent the bullpen of the Dodgers. After Brendan Morrow threw a scoreless seventh, he went back out to start the eighth against Alex Bregman, but with Kenley Jansen warming. Alex Bregman leads off the eighth. Bregman hits it in the right field fairly well. On the run is Puig. He dives. He can't get it. It hits off his glove and then bounces into the seats. Bregman will end up at second base, hoping that starts a big rally here in the eighth. Off the bat, I thought it would be a double down the line, and he, he closed on it and barely took off the end of his glove. He made it a lot closer than I thought it would be. Dave Roberts is going to go to his bullpen. Jansen's going to be called upon to try and get a six out save. He's retired hitter after hitter and racked up save after save. And he'll be facing the best hitter in Major League Baseball this year. Jose Altuve. Chops it up the middle. Bregman goes to third. Utley is there for out number one. And now the inning falls to Carlos Correa. The 1-0. And 
Correa chops it up the middle, and that'll get past Utley and into center field. Bregman scores. It's an RBI single for Correa, and it's 3 to 2 Dodger. Still, Jansen held Houston off from there. McCann down on strike. The Astros do come up with a run, but the Dodgers now three outs away from going two games up on the Astros. Ninth inning. Dodgers with a 3 to 2 lead over the Astros as the Astros trying to avoid falling behind two games to none in the World Series. Kenley Jansen looking for his second career six out save in the postseason. He's the best closer in the game. That's, that's not seeking. And I went to the play just with the goal to, to get a hit. And Marwin chops it foul up the first baseline and he's quickly down to the count two strikes. It was a draw the last few games for me. I mean, I was just, I didn't try to do too much. And Marwin lifts this one pretty deep to left center field. Taylor on his horse going back at the wall. Let's go! Let's go! Marwin has tied it at three! What an unbelievable turn of events. There was no way to see this coming. It was like a new start, a new beginning. Like we show that we have the chance to, to get back in the, in the game, and that was super special. Incredibly, the Astros had tied it. But that's all they got in the ninth. And soon, game two of the World Series was in extra innings. With a likely suspect looking to play hero, leading off the 10th. 3-3, 10th inning. Altuve to left center field. Oh, come on, Jose. Come on. Come on. Yeah, out of board. See you later. Jose Altuve puts the Astros ahead in the 10th, 4-3. That boy, Jose. But Houston had more in store. Here's Carlos Correa. Here's one into left center field off the bat of Correa. And you can kiss that one goodbye. Back to back jacks for the Astros. And the Astros with a two run cushion now at Dodger Stadium. And this crowd is stunned. So the Astros were now up five to three. And they had their closer ready to finish the job and even the series. But it turned out. The drama was just getting started. Ken Giles still on the mound, trying to get three more out. Well, it's up to Yasiel Puig to begin the bottom half of the 10th inning. 54,000 screaming Puig's name in unison. On two and one. Fly ball, left field. Puig has hit it out. It is now five to four. Giles struck out the next two Dodgers. But then Logan Forsyth worked a walk and went to second on a wild pitch. And here's Kike Hernandez. He's a winning run at the plate. These Dodgers will not go quietly into this good night. Ground ball base hit into right field. Here comes Forsyth. Throw to the plate, and he is safe. And the Dodgers have tied it at five. Dodgers come off the mat. Ten innings had felt like ten rounds, and the Astros were like a prize fighter who'd just gotten stung by a shot they didn't see coming. But then, a voice emerged to snap them back into it. It's a roller coaster, you know. You get you get so up, and it's and and that's the thing. I mean, it's so easy to come crashing back down when things don't go your way. The starter, Justin Verlander, came out of the clubhouse and was yelling at his teammates that this isn't over. You know, that's really that was my that was my only message. You know, just to remind guys that just because they came back and tied the game doesn't mean that we're out of this by any means. And let's go, stay positive, win this game. Five five into the eleventh. Four hours into this game, and it has been a nail biter from pitch one until now. Cameron Maben singled to lead off the frame, and that brought back up George Springer, hitting just 241 with two RBIs in the postseason. But the Astros' leadoff hitter hadn't lost any of his edge, any of his faith that he could turn the game back around with just one swing. McCarthy set. 
Jones down at second. Here's a 2 1. And Springer drives one pretty deep to right center field. Oh, yeah! Come on! Come on! Get up, ball! That ball is gone! Yeah! I literally could have cried as how emotional I felt. People were talking about, hey, should they move Springer down in the order? I kind of doubt it now. Just like that, the Astros had their two run lead back. Just like that, they were three outs away again from their franchise's first ever World Series win and evening things at one game apiece. They got the first two outs quickly, but this was a game that wasn't going to go quietly into the night. Last hope for the Dodgers is Charlie Culberson. Trying to give the Dodgers a chance. They need a base runner, and here's a high fly ball into left. That one is deep. That one is gone. It is now seven to six. You believe this? I mean, this game is crazy. And guess who's coming up with two out? Yasiel Puig. No one is sitting here at Dodger Stadium. Kavinsky hands over the head of the windup, delivers. And Puig takes a strike at the top of the zone, nothing in one. It's seven to six, two out in the bottom of the 11. Puig awaits, here's the pitch, and he fouls it off to the right and out of play. And now the Astros are one strike away. Two strikes, two out. Davinsky to Puig. He didn't swing at the pitch. Boy, he went a long way on that pitch down and away. Puig fighting till the end. Devo delivers. Swing and a miss. Puig strikes out, and that is the ball game. The Houston Astros defeat the Dodgers in 11 innings, 7 to 6. And this series is tied at a game apiece going back to Houston. That's what we're supposed to do. To be in the World Series uh, in this atmosphere and, and to have this type of game, man, it, it doesn't get any more exciting than this. I mean, I, it's up and down, what a roller coaster ride, but uh, to come out on the winning side of this, man, I, I, I just I love this team. I love these guys. We battle, and uh, you know, hopefully we can carry this momentum back to Houston. Melanie no se quería dormir, ella estaba como esperando que terminara el juego también. Si estábamos todos aquí sentados y gritábamos y, y nos abrazábamos. Y, y fue muy emocionante, de verdad. Y, y de Melanie, bueno, ahí gritábamos. Yo creo que los vecinos me escucharon cuando estábamos gritando nosotros ahí. ¿Y besos? No, besos sin eso. Mira. <risa> For Jose Altuve, going back home for three straight games in the middle of the World Series came with an obvious bonus, family time, with his wife Nina and their one-year-old daughter Melanie. <laughs> Desearía que todos los niños en este mundo tuvieran un papá como él. You know, we are three games away for winning the World Series. You know, I think we play better baseball at home. It's nothing guaranteed. We still have to come here and make it happen. And all season long, no one had made more happen for the Astros than their five foot six inch second baseman. Now, unquestionably, one of the very best players in all of baseball. Number 27, Jose Altuve! Man, can this guy flat out rake. Altuve can admire this one. This is well gone. Pound for pound, the greatest baseball player who's ever lived. Altuve matches his career high with his 24th home run. That cute story of the little engine that could, the little train that could, is completely gone. I mean, this guy is a fortified, absolute star in this game. Altuve! Oppo! Where are the chants? MVP! MVP! Well, there's not much more to say. I mean, he's, he's the best hitter in the league, period. You ready to go with this? I'm ready, ready. We're ready to roll. Let's go, All baby. Right, All right, big dog. All right, big dog. Let's do it. The Astros splitting the two games with the Dodgers out in L.A. And this is the first of three over the next three nights here at Minute Maid Park. They've been great here at home in the postseason, 6-0 and coming into this game tonight.
This franchise has never won a World Series game at home, and they are ready for it in this town. I feel like we are a better team playing here in Houston, and the, the reason is because our fans, you know, they get very loud. Woo! Smells, baby! Let's go, Astros! Yeah! We love the city, we love the fans, and, you know, we would like to make it happen. Fun times, huh? Fun times. Man. Two good groups, though, going at it. Yeah. That's what I love about it. Yeah. Right. Exciting baseball. That works. That works. They've been waiting a while for this here in Houston. Remember so many tough times this year, the loss of life, the loss of property through Hurricane Harvey. You can't come here this year and not think of that. I think the guys realized early on when they got back after the big storm and they were blocked out of town for almost a week that, you know, how the town embraced them and showed up, and they took that and ran with it. Houston strong! You know, there's so many players on our team and coaches that are not from Texas, they're not from Houston, but they've adopted the city in a very short period of time. We're a baseball team, we're representing the city, we wear this patch for a reason. We're proud to be Houstonians. The city went through and is still going through, you know, a pretty big tragedy. And for us to get here and provide some people with a momentary lapse from the reality is great. Let me go say hi to the kids real quick. What's up, guys? I'm going to sign something for you. There you go. You guys having a good time? Yeah. Awesome. You know, the fans have really gotten behind us, and our team feeds off that. It's strengthened the bond between the fans here in Houston and this Houston Astros team. Have a good one, guys. Hi. Every guy has bought into the fact that you're playing for what's on the front of your jersey and not on the back. <laughs> In best of seven World Series, when it was tied at one, the team that has won game three has gone on to win the series 68% of the time. J.J. Watt of the Texans, injured after the year with a broken leg, but obviously beloved here in Houston for what he does on the field and what he did to help uh, in the relief efforts after Hurricane Harvey. He threw out the ceremonial first pitch tonight. The crowd, of course, loving every moment of that. It's incredible. I mean, they've given the reason to say the smile. They've given us a reason to cheer. So it's, uh, it's very special. And uh, we can't thank them enough. And we obviously hope they go the whole way. On the mound tonight for the Astros, 24 year old right hander Lance McCullers Jr. This is a young guy with a great arm and a lot of confidence. The roof is closed and the place is jumping right now. And we are ready for the start of game three. We feed off the energy. I know that other teams, when they come in here, they say it all the time. They're like, this place is extremely loud. And it is, and, and we feed off that. It's hit hard, but Altuve knocks it down, down the right field line. Long throw to first is in time. Adrenaline is, is the greatest drug there is. So when you got adrenaline, you run faster, you swing harder, you, you play better defense. Springer going back and makes the grab. About four feet before running up against the fence in deep right center. The starting pitcher tonight for the Dodgers, the former Texas Ranger, Hugh Darvish. So he knows the Astros, the Astros know him. You know, I feel like when you face a guy over and over like we did with Darvish the last three years, we kind of like know how his pitches look. It's like a coin flip. I knew it was going to be like that, either like a really good game for him or, or like a really good game for us. And that's ripped deep to left field, and you can kiss that one goodbye. <laughs> Yuli Gurriel with his first postseason home run, and it's 1-0 Astros. This is City, baby. This is City, baby. Let's go. Let's go. We did such a good job against Darvish. He didn't have his best stuff, and you know, we made him pay. You now Reddick sends one down the left field line, a pair of all. We got the timely hits, we just kept the line moving and got one big hit after another. High fly ball to left center, off the wall. Reddick coming to the plate. No throw, 2-0 Houston. Darvish having tremendous difficulty commanding his pitches. And McCann lines it in the right center for a base hit. An RBI for Brian McCann. The Astros' second inning onslaught ultimately brought four runs across the plate for Houston. 
a double by Altuve that was hit like a rock as they continue to knock around you, Darvish. They were taking good swings, obviously taking good at-bats against him, but I think that he just really didn't have the feeling, couldn't get any type of rhythm going. And Darvish is KO'd here in the second. That's huge. Anytime you can get a, build a big lead, it completely throws so much pressure on the other side. Uh, four runs in the playoffs feels like eight. The hard part is knowing it's 4 nothing and trying to tell yourself it's 0-0. Zero, zero. It's almost 30 minutes from the last pitch he threw until this moment. He'll take the four runs, but that's a long time to be sitting on the bench. In that situation, you have to stick with the game plan. And my game plan to those guys coming up was to throw breaking balls. And I made some pretty good pitches to Jock. He fouled them off and, and kind of waited me out. Ninth pitch of the at-bat is down. That was a very good at-bat by Jock Peterson. And McCullough's very unhappy with himself. Couldn't execute on the curveball. I wasn't bothered by the, the time break or whatever the case was. I just wasn't executing. Oh, let's go, Lance! Got to throw a strike, and he cannot. Back-to-back -back walks to start this third. All of a sudden, their pitcher, who was locked in the first two innings, can't find the zone. And it's inside, missed with a curveball, ball four, and McCullers has walked the bases loaded. When I walked three guys in a row and Seager was up, I told myself, this is the game. You got to show yourself, show the team, show everyone what you're made of. You have to get out of this situation. If you let them get back in here, we may not recover. McCann, the 12-year veteran catcher, out to say a word to McCullers. And Mac reminded me that we're one executed pitch away from a double play and from almost getting out of this thing. Bases loaded, nobody out, and Corey Seager at the plate. To the right side, Guriel. Out at second and got them both. What a double play. A run did score on the double play. But a moment later, McCullers got another ground ball to get out of it without any more damage. What a job by McCullers. To me, that was the turning point in the game. A turning point because it kept the home crowd energized as they watched their team hang on to their early lead. Coming on, diving catch by Springer. He just saved a run. McCullers would eventually tire in the sixth, giving up two more runs. But Brad Peacock, who pitched so well as a starter and reliever during the season, took over from there. And a 3-2 and a swing and a miss. It would all add up to Houston's seventh straight postseason win at home. 43,282 on their feet. Peacock one strike away from what would easily be the loudest ovation ever directed at him. High fly ball to right. Reddick is there, and the Astros take game three. For the first time ever, the Astros win a World Series game here in Houston. And they have taken a 2-1 to -one lead in the World Series. Come back and play baseball here. It's such a home field advantage for us. And we can't thank the fans enough. I know the city has been through a lot this year with the hurricane. But I think they are one of the, the biggest reasons why we're here. Stu, guys. Stu. We want to become a World City champion for them. Boom. To me, it seems like this World Series, the players are having more fun than any other World Absolutely, Series. Absolutely, man. You got two young teams out there playing to, to, to win the, the, the championship, so that's to be expected. The regular season is different, you know. You right. play 162 games, you're supposed to contribute at some point. When it's in the World Series, you get seven games to be able to contribute, you know what I mean, and, and do something for your team and be able to make history. If 23-year-old Carlos Correa was happy to be in the middle of a World Series, 33-year-old Game 4 starter Charlie Morton was also right where he wanted to be. He's 11-3, including the postseason, pitching in this ballpark. They have a lot of confidence in what Charlie Morton can do against this Dodger lineup tonight. Meanwhile, for Dodger starter Alex Wood, history said that pitching on the road was the least of his challenges. There's no tougher role in the postseason than being the number four starter because you're not going to get a lot of reps 
Alex Wood has pitched once in 32 days. 44 teams have fallen behind 3 to 1 in the history of World Series play. 37 of those teams have gone on to lose the World Series. Alex Wood and the Dodgers very much looking to even things up today. Even putting aside the scouting reports on each pitcher, number four starters aren't usually expected to dominate. But Morton and Wood had their own expectations. Strike three call, seven strikeouts for Morton through five brilliant scoreless innings. Strikeouts are nice, but to be able to, to keep my pitch count down, they'll get through five, and that gives AJ a real option that you know, I might be able to go out there for six, seven, even more. While Morton cruised, Wood was just as great, keeping the Astros' bats hitless through the fifth. Change up and Gurriel was fooled. Alex Wood hasn't given up a hit. It was no secret that I needed to go a little bit further than probably they would have normally wanted me to uh, in, in a playoff atmosphere. And so I was happy to go out there and throw the way that I did and give our team a chance to win the game. For Dave Roberts, he's got to be ecstatic about Alex Wood's performance, but he's got to get his offense going. In the top of the sixth, the Dodgers did get runners on the corners with one out. But then Alex Bregman dealt with a threat. Inside, Bregman comes home. Two out. Alex Bregman has done his trick yet again. We had a play similar to it against the Yankees where Frazier hit me a ground ball and threw out Bird at the plate. Ground ball softly hit left side, fielded by Bregman. He goes home with it. Bird is out at the plate. I was thinking about that play in that situation. As soon as I saw the ball go down, I went to go get it. Once I caught the ball, just trying to deliver a good throw to the can. Dodgers had runners at the corners in one out. Yeah. And the Astros defense keep them off the board. So Wood went back to work in the bottom of the sixth with still no room for error. He got the first two outs quickly, but then fell behind three and one to the dangerous George Springer. Houston's lineup is tremendous. You can't slip up even on one pitch. Springer hits it high in the air and deep to left field, and you can kiss it goodbye. The Astros' first hit of the night is a George Springer homer. One to nothing, Astros. He had been living down all day, so. Um, just to, trying to get something up in the zone to hit, and it wasn't that bad of a pitch, actually. Just able to hit it out. And the first hit of the night, given up by Wood, will come on the last pitch that he throws. Wood was great, but Springer got him, and Houston now leads one another. Now Charlie Morton finally had a lead. But with one out in the seventh, he faced off against Cody Bellinger, still looking incredibly for his first series hit and looking nothing like the breakout star he'd become during his rookie season. All right, Cody, we've got a major league contract for you. Congratulations. Thank you. You're ready for batting practice, man. Good to have you. Bellinger hammers the ball to deep right field. His first career home run. Another two home run game for Cody Bellinger. When he came up, they became the best team in baseball. I drive right field, a new National League rookie home run record. He arrived on the scene in late April, and he took the baseball world by storm. Now, back in October, the 22-year-old was just simply looking to make contact and get something started for the Dodgers. Ballinger hits it hard into left. Gonzalez and Bellinger's got his first World Series hit. It's a miracle. Bellinger's double chased Charlie Morton out of the game. And he was the potential tying run with Logan Forsythe coming to the plate. The Dodgers are now one for 17 with runners in scoring position in this World Series. They're looking for a two out hit from Logan Forsythe. Forsythe has tied this game. Bellinger to the plate, and a two-out RBI hit makes it 1-1. The score stayed tied into the ninth. And then, the Dodgers went to work on the struggling Ken Giles. With Cody Bellinger getting another chance, 
to put his series slump totally behind him. Two on, nobody out for Cody Bellinger. Opportunity in the ninth for the Dodgers. Bellinger lines one into left center field for a base hit. Seeger rounding third. He will score. Bellinger with a double, and the Dodgers take a two to one lead. For me in that situation, I saw a big shift on the infield, and I just want to put the barrel on it and put the ball in play and see if anything can happen. And the Dodgers were looking to make more happen. A sack fly made it 3-1. And then Jock Peterson put the game away. Fly ball to right. Reddick going back. It's a three-run home run for Jock Peterson. The Dodgers explode in the ninth. They score five. And the Dodgers lead it six to one. You like that? You like that? Go. With plenty of breathing room, Kenley Jansen came in to finish off a massive victory. Dodgers have even the series. I'm a big man in the bus. They win it 6-2 here tonight. Cody Bellinger with a pair of big doubles. So that's what it is. Oh, yeah. That's what punching you do. Punching you do. The Dodgers bounce back, ensuring the series will go back to Dodger Stadium. And this one is now a best two out of three. Great, great job. Great job, Big We have no time to feel sorry for ourselves. We got to show up tomorrow ready to go. I can't wait. Uh, I know everyone in here wishes the game was right now. I know we're not going to back down. The Dodgers are back even in this series with their ace going to the mound against Dallas Keuchel on Sunday night. Live from Minute Maid Park in downtown Houston, Texas, it's Game 5. We're able to knot the series at two games apiece, and that's where we stand going into the final home game of 2017 for the Houston Astros. Guys, it's October 29th. I'll repeat, October 29th. Houston fans are aware that this one's going back to Los Angeles, of course, and that's where the Dodgers had the best home winning percentage in all of baseball. So certainly a game that's probably means a little bit more to the Astros at this point. The Dodgers tonight has sent out left-hander Clayton Kershaw. Tonight is the night the Dodgers have planned for Clayton Kershaw all year. A three-time Cy Young Award winner. He is a multiple-time ERA champ. He's a strikeout king, and he is pitching brilliantly. You know, each game is in and of itself a uh, Game 7 time atmosphere for us, so uh, I'm going to be ready to go and, uh, you know, looking forward to that challenge. Dallas Keuchel making his fifth postseason start this year. I think a little bit more pressure on Dallas Keuchel tonight. He knows what's in store. The good news for Houston is Dallas Keuchel's at home, and at home he has been basically unbeatable, especially in the postseason. It's going to be a fun game five just based on I just faced this team five days ago, and we'll see what kind of adjustments they make to me and then what kind of adjustments I make to them. And early on, it was the Dodgers whose adjustments made the difference, as Keuchel quickly found himself in trouble in the first. Bases are loaded now with two down. Logan Forsythe takes his turn. Lined into left to base hit. Taylor scores. Ball gets away from Gonzalez and Turner scores easily. It's 2 nothing Dodgers. Once he booted it off the heel. Easy two runs and a good way for the Dodgers to quiet the crowd. Hernandez off third. Forsythe off first. Throw to first, they got the runner picked off, and now a bad throw will allow the runner from third to come home. A disaster for the Astros. This is the worst of all worlds for A.J. Hinch and the Astros. Keuchel not pitching well, falling behind, and the pitch count getting up in a hurry. Keuchel managed to settle down and keep the Dodgers scoreless in the next two innings. But then in the fourth came more trouble. Barnes drills it down the left field line, and it's going to drop in for a base hit. Forsyth rounding third, and he will score. And it's 4 nothing Dodgers in the fourth. Meanwhile, Clayton Kershaw was on cruise control. Swing, 
swings and misses down on strikes. Kershaw was 105 and seven over his career, coming in with a four run lead. So when George Springer drew a leadoff walk in the bottom of the fourth, the Astros were desperate to try to build anything they could. I remember guys coming in the dugout and just talking about getting base runners. Do whatever you can to get on base and see if we can put some pressure on him. Altuve with a knock into left field. And here come the Astros with one out in the fourth. You're not going to get a ton of opportunities, and here is one for the Houston Astros with their cleanup hitter, Carlos Correa, at the plate. Trayton Kirsch on the mound, losing by four runs. I was just trying to put the ball in the air. I didn't want to hit a ground ball for a double play, so I was trying to get under the baseball. That's a base hit. Springer will come to the plate. Altuve over to third. Into second, Correa. It's four to one. The Astros have two minutes scoring position and will get the time run to the plate. You have one or two chances a game to beat a guy like Kershaw. If you don't capitalize on that pitch, then that might have been uh, a little bit off. You may not get another chance. Kershaw's slider doesn't look as crisp as we've seen it in the past. Astros trying to make a statement, and Kershaw needs some big pitches now. And now it's Yuli Gurriel. He's been great for us all year. But the thing about him that I think stands out to me is his timing of his hits. First pitch from Kershaw. They're just in clutch spots. Gurriel swings. And that one is gone. One pitch, and this one is tied. De verdad, cuando uno está enfrentando a un lanzador de la calidad de, de Kershaw. Yuli Gurriel with the three run shot makes it four to four. And this crowd is going bonkers. Kershaw has been shaken up. And it only got worse for Kershaw in the fifth. And the Astros got to him again and chased him from the game. For us to go up against arguably the best pitcher of our era and get six off of him is the biggest difference in that game. But the truth was that Clayton Kershaw's struggles would be a distant memory by the time the roller coaster of an evening finally ended. I thought game two was the craziest game I've ever played in. Then we played game five. Two on out for Bellinger. High fly ball into right. Back at the wall. It's gone. The Dodgers retake the lead at seven to four. It was a crazy game, one of the craziest games I ever played. A game tying three run home run. For Jose Altuve, it's seven to seven. These two teams look utterly exhausted. Oh my God, they come back. And Bellinger slaps the ball into center field, and it gets past Springer. And the Dodgers are back on top, eight seven. This was one he's got to keep in front of him. I know I made a bad decision there. I watched the ball go called by me. That's a very lonely feeling. But th then I, I knew that I had to at least attempt to make up for it. And I can't really tell you what happened. I just, I saw it, and honestly, I just swung. And Springer, a toes for the ball at center! One pitch to Springer, and we're tied again. That back and forth that came with huge swings on both sides. Hit hard to left field. It's over his head! Here comes the throw to the plate. Astros lead! No one's going to concede it in a bat. It's gone! Two run homer! It's 11 to 8 Astros! No one concedes an inning. And it's an 11 9 game on a double by Seeger. No one's going to concede the game. McCann with a swing and a drive, and that one's going to get out of here! The drama is at an all time high. Yasiel Puig into the Crawford box and a home run! It is a one-run game. Chris Taylor's the last chance for L.A. tonight. Dodgers down to their final strike. Tying run 90 feet away. Devo not in agreement with McCann. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Taylor with a base hit up the middle that'll tie it. Oh, my goodness! 
This game will not go quietly into this good night. There was a moment of like, what just happened? How did they tie the game? The exhaustion level was at the highest level I've ever seen in baseball. It's not any time to be sorry about yourself. So, okay, they tied the game, and I was like, okay, then we gotta do it again. And in the bottom of the 10th, Houston got its next chance. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Jansen to Brian McCann, here's the pitch. And that hits McCann. So McCann's aboard represents the winning run. George Springer then followed with a walk to move McCann to second. Once he got to second, I remember an old phrase that an old coach of mine used to have, beat him with a single. And when you think beat him with a single, you need a good base runner at second base. And now we're going to see a pinch runner at second for McCann. Derek Fisher represents the winning run out there with two gone in the 10th. And the batter will be the young infielder, Alex Bregman. The only run that counts is the pinch runner, Derek Fisher, at second base. I don't have to worry about anything other than if the ball hits the outfield grass, you're going home. Score, man. Score. Bregman one for four tonight. First pitch. And Alex Lyons is in the left center field. That's a base hit. Fisher around third and coming home. The throw to the plate. Not in time. Astros win. Astros win. When I crossed the plate, it was like, you know, you could just feel it. The stadium, you know, the team, man, it was like it's it's over. It's finally over. 13 to 12 in 10 innings. And Alex Bregman is the walk-off hero tonight. I'll say this. I thought game two was probably the best baseball game I ever played in. I didn't think that would ever be top. A lot of people are going to wake up and see this and can't believe it. We've seen it our own eyes, can't believe it. The final game of the season here in Houston, a city that needed an emotional boost after Hurricane Harvey, and boy, did they get one tonight. And a game that won't be forgotten anytime soon. The Astros get the last big hit, and they are now one win away from a championship. man what's up hey go Astros go Astros I think we have a really really positive shot and we could wrap it up and hopefully by this time 24 hours from now we're talking about the World Series champion Astros. uh Miss Carol how are you Mr. Ennis yes let me tell you this one thing mm -hmm. right now we're gonna win tonight mm -hmm. we are going to win tonight Greetings from Dodgers Stadium in Los Angeles, California, where tonight the Houston Astros take on the Los Angeles Dodgers in Game 6 of the World Series. As the Astros, one win away from their first ever World Series championship. We've earned the right to get to this point. I think it'll mean more if we can win. You know, I think our team is very uh, loose today. Put the visual in your head. <laughs> They're very ready to leave it all out on the field and... and you know, these are dream scenarios. When you're kids, you want to be in this moment. This is it. The whole thing. That is it. This is it. The Dodgers know exactly what is on hand tonight. The victory will move to game seven tomorrow. It's going to be a fun night. A lot of energy, and it is nice to come back home. I feel good now. I feel good to be back home. Right? I don't think there's going to be any sort of panic. I think that we're ready for this, and 
We're gonna find a win again. They came home, everybody. Ah! Oh, John. Win or go home for the Dodgers, and they turn to Rich Hill. The Astros look to clinch the first World Series in franchise history. They will counter with ace Justin Verlander. It's a new day. Verlander today. Justin Verlander on the mound for the Astros tonight, and he's certainly the guy you want in this type of ball game for the Astros. You know, he's the type of pitcher that thrives in situations like this. He's meant for these types of games. It was exactly why the Astros had gotten Verlander in a trade that had only gone down at the last possible moment. Everyone expected them to make a bigger move at the deadline than they did. Disappointment is a little bit of, uh, of an understatement. At the end of the year, we want to be the only ones left, and it's just a little disappointing for sure. Keiko came out and was talking about it. Hey, you know, why didn't we make a move? They needed to do something. What have you done for me lately? The seismic news late last night, Justin Verlander going to the Houston Astros. He was always a top target for us, so our appetite to bring him in increased, our need increased, and it all came together at the end. You know, Jeff kept working on it. Finally, he got the players right that he was comfortable in trading, and then, you know, gave me the call and said, the money's not right. And I said, well, let's go put the money in and let's finish. So we, we were able to get him right on the buzzer, and, you know, it turned out to be, you know, probably one of the better moves of the year. Give credit to ownership for pushing this across before the August 31st deadline. For the front office to go out and say, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna go get him, it means a lot to us. It showed us that everybody is actually on board, they're getting behind us, and we're going for it. I wanted to come here and, and show the city what I can do. And he strikes out his 11th today. Matches his season high as most as an Astro. This is what you dream of as a kid. You dream of the playoffs, and you dream of the World Series, and you dream of winning it all. And I, I feel like I've accomplished most of those things in this game, except for the last one, which is winning it all. One more win for the Astros. They won their first World Series championship in club history. Sounds easy to say, yeah. but a lot harder to do. We have, you know, one more victory, but we stay very humble about that. We also know who we're playing. You know, you have to, to play for every single inning. Just try to do the best we can. It's not going to be finished Tuesday. It's going to be game seven. Uh, it's going to be pretty intense. Win or lose, I've given everything I possibly can and prepared as best I possibly can. And I think that's all you can ask for. It's something that all of us have been preparing our entire careers for. You know, such a great opportunity to go out there and leave it all out in the field. You got one team facing elimination. You've got another team that's kind of acting like they're facing elimination. Can't wait to see what unfolds in front of our eyes on this cool evening in Los Angeles. It's game six. That's a lot, huh? Both pitchers started strong. But then, a likely suspect opened the scoring. Springer began the series striking out four times, but since then he has been red hot. Hits this one pretty well to right field, sending Quig back onto the warning track. Looks up, get legs, it's go! George Springer off the field, Homer! Springer Dinger! His fourth home run of the World Series. Springer has made it one to nothing. Astros here in the third. That's just one run. We got this. That one run lead looked like plenty for Verlander. He took a shutout into the sixth. Well, the sixth inning was magic for the Dodgers in games one and two. They're hoping somehow they can get some magic here in the bottom of the sixth in game six. And Barnes is aboard on the second Dodger hit of the ball game. One and two, Utley gets hit by a pitch. Wow. Now it's first and second, still nobody out. That'll turn the lineup over. You got Taylor right here. One and two. Into right field. Here's Barnes to score. Chris Taylor does it again. The Dodgers have tied the score at one. We've got a new game. The Dodgers have second and third. Nobody out. Seager coming up. 
Driven to deep right field. Both runners will tag. In the score, Utley off the third, Taylor. And the Dodgers lead 2-1. to one. And one inning later, Jock Peterson doubled the lead. Peterson delivers again. What a World Series for Jock Peterson. Jumping for joy, rounding third, heading home. The Dodgers lead three to one. And from there, the Dodger bullpen handled the rest, setting the stage for one more game to decide it all. This series too good to end in six. Dodgers force a game seven. Go, go. The Astros could have ever asked for, they had. Justin Verlander dominated. They got the lead early. Springer yet again had a big swing. And guess what? We're swinging towards game seven tomorrow night. Game seven tomorrow, baby! Tonight, tonight doesn't mean a whole lot. You gotta go out and find a way to win a game tomorrow. If you would have told me in spring training that I'd, I would get a chance to play in game seven of the World Series on November 1st, I'd say I'm in. This is awesome. Stadium. Boys are here. November 1st. November 1st. Put that in your calendar and remember it. Never been a part of a game seven. This is when you're a young kid and you're kind of trying to play through all the heroes and the heroics and talking about a game seven in the World Series and um, here we are. Sleep last night? Yeah. I feel like I haven't slept in weeks. I'm jittery, man. I'm just nervous for I'm just nervous for the Dodgers and it's been such a back and forth competitive series. We're playing in one of the most epic World Series in history. And I think our players have an appreciation for that. We want to win. We're gonna do everything we can today to win. There you go. But we're not letting the emotional angst get the best of us. Set it, forget it, load, go. Oh. If you're gonna do the guy swing, at least get it right. Oh, yeah, you you're, first. Not, you're not even close. It's game seven of the 113th World Series, one of the most thrilling ever played. We've seen a record setting number of home runs. We've seen two extra inning games. It's been a blast. We have squeezed every drop out of this thing so far. It's kind of a shame. One team's gonna have to lose here tonight. We're the two best teams in baseball. We've got two teams with a bunch of dogs in the clubhouse. No one's afraid to back down, and I expect a great game seven. Crowd in excess of 54,000, all standing. There's never been a game seven in Dodger State in history. The stadium is not even full yet. Half of them are in the parking lot. Listen to this. Everybody's running on empty. Who's got the most reserve in their tank to get through one more winner take all? Springer ready in the box. Darvish working out of the set, and the first pitch of the game misses inside, and we're underway in game seven. Let's go, Dodgers! And just two pitches later, the Astros began their assault on you, Darvish. And Springer rips it down the left field line, and that is a fair ball and headed into the left field corner. In the second with a double and a good start for the Astros. Bregman now with a runner at second, nobody out. 
To the right side. Darvish has to get over. Tough play. Wild throw and into the dugout. Scoring is Springer. Bregman goes to second. One nothing Astros. An error charge to Bellinger. And the Dodgers needing some spelling salts in a hurry. But all L.A. would get from the Astros were more punches from every imaginable angle. There goes Bregman. The 1-1 one, one bounces in there. No throw by Barnes, and it's a stolen base for Alex Bregman. So the Astros, with a run already on the board, being aggressive here in the first inning. Tuve grounds it softly right side. This will get in a run as Bregman scores, and the Astros have a 2-0 lead. 2-0 Houston as folks are still kind of settling in with their beer and nachos tonight. Hey, bad news, guys. <laughs> You're already down two to nothing. His teammates had given Lance McCullers the early lead, but he didn't want to waver from his approach. I don't try to go out there and say, I'm going to throw the best game of my life today, or I'm going to throw a complete game. I want the ball as long as I can have the ball, and I want to give the team the best opportunity to win. And it doesn't always go as planned. This one into right center field. Back as Springer will get it. And just like the top of the inning, a leadoff double. For Lance to be at his best, he's got to be in the strike zone with both pitches. His breaking ball was really good. He just had a hard time getting his fastball over. And it hit him. Second hit batsman of the inning. The Dodgers have loaded the bases with two out for the dangerous Jock Peterson. On their feet for what is sure to be the first of many, many times here at Dodger Stadium. Colors working out of the windup. Here comes the 0-2. And that's hit on a hop right at Altuve. Second baseman up with it. Throws the first in time in the inning. Draws to a close. And when the Astros came up in the second, they looked to keep building opportunities with a two-run lead against the very shaky Darvish. Inside and low ball four. Oh. It has been anything but smooth and easy for Darvish to this point. That is a shot into right center field. Green will go get it off the wall. McCann will go first to third. Marlon Gonzalez delivers here with nobody out. Darvish yet to find his rhythm. And his shelf life appears to be rapidly expiring. Morrow gets loose. McCullers stands in. One out with two minutes scoring position for Lance McCullers. Chop to the right side. The play is to first as McCann scores. An RBI for Lance McCullers Jr. He's made it 3-0 Houston. Under at third for the red hot George Springer. George Springer has reached base in nine of his last ten plate appearances. Four World Series homers for Springer. And he's homered in three straight games, which ties a record for a single World Series. Darvish trying to neutralize this rally and limited it just a run. I'd venture to guess if he doesn't get Springer, he's gone. And the body language is atrocious right now. You're looking at a defeated pitcher already. Crowd standing. Darvish on three and two. Here comes the pitch. And George drills this one deep to left center field. Oh! You can kiss that one goodbye. A two run home run for George Springer. Yeah! And the Astros lead it five to nothing. Springer homers for the fourth straight game. And you're looking at a possible MVP. He did those kind of things. Obviously, he's not. When he hit that homer, I knew that was a big punch for Dan to come back. And Roberts can't get to the mound quick enough. He wishes he had a moped at this point. But the damage had already been done. And from there, the story became about the Dodgers and a string of missed chances. And now the Dodgers have stranded eight. I almost felt like it's got to be ours. There's no way that there's going to be too much opportunity for them to get back into the game. Bottom of the sixth inning, and now on the pitch for the Astros, working on three days rest, Charlie Morton. 
Morton comes in the middle of a game and all of a sudden he's in trouble. Two on for the Dodgers in the sixth. Deep here to the right side, base hit. Here comes Peterson. He will score. Five to one. He's got chaos on the bases. He's erratic with his fastball. The nerves were getting to him a little bit. Two out in the inning, and the batter will be Seeger. But Charlie did a great job getting out of it after just the one run. Shattered his bat. It turns into a routine chance for Correa to retire the side. Bottom of the seventh inning with Charlie Morton still on the mound. When he went back out for his second inning, completely different pitcher. Completely in control, almost like his routine was back in place. And he is throwing some filth up there. Then you start counting outs. I wanted to play out by out, but I couldn't help to be counting, OK, six more, five more, four more. Three outs away from their first world championship as they play in their 56th year of franchise history. Morton with the 0-2. And Utley swings through it for strike three. When those outs started kind of flowing, I just, it was hard to believe that this is it. Broken bat, Altuve comes to get it. Two out. And the Astros are ready to explode. Two outs in the bottom of the ninth inning. As a last hope for the Dodgers is Corey Seager. I look out on the mound, I got Charlie Morton in his fourth inning of game seven of the World Series. I've got the shift going where Bregman's playing shortstop and Correa's on the other side of second base. Altuve's in deep right field. Yuli's playing first base. The outfield's in the right position. We just needed one out. Round ball right side into the shift. I didn't care where they hit it. It was so appropriate to hit it to Altuve. I was like, okay, he's coming to me. You need to catch this ball. After I caught that ball, I was like, okay, now you gotta get a good grip and make a good throw. The Houston Astros are world champions! For the first time ever, the Astros are baseball's best. World Series champions! Who would have ever believed? It's gonna take me a while to believe we won. When the final out was made, my wife and I and my daughter just embraced and everybody started crying. I couldn't stop crying that night because it was for every guy that's ever put on an Astros jersey. It was for the fans that had had their hearts broken so many times. And so all of that emotion just flowed out. And then the personal appreciation and admiration for the players on our team and what their sacrifice was to get there. When a baseball club wins a World Series, the moment can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. For some, it's about knowing what it was like in the beginning. Yeah, you got it right here, right here. Knowing how much work it takes to rise just about as high as you could ever dream. Works in this MVP I love here. this guy. Works I love in this, this MVP. Guy. Then there are those who join the story in the nick of time, but found ways to make their part in it unforgettable. I mean, I've this my whole life. I can't even, I can't even play the words. I'm so honored to be here, man. When you play 20 years for something like this, it feels just as good as you would have imagined. Wow. But if you can get a title right at the start of your path, it only makes you want to get as many more as you can. Plenty more of those. Plenty more. World Series titles are for journeymen who pick just the right time to peak. And they're also for budding superstars. The greatest feeling in the world. Are you kidding me? Who want the world to see just how lucky they are. Will you marry me? Oh my God. Will you marry me? 
World Series titles are the perfect way to prove everyone who said you couldn't make it dead wrong. Hey, you're the best, man. You're the best. And they're a way to remind you how great being part of a team can be. The best team in baseball is my team! Yeah! But in this case, maybe most of all, a World Series title was the perfect gift for a city looking for hope, faith, distraction, and a glimmer of pure joy, any way they could get it. Every single person here, every person in the city, every person in the state of Texas that believed in our team. Houston, we have a championship team and no one can take that away from us. Take a look at this. <laughs> Who's the guy that predicted this? <laughs> Who saw you? I mean, whoever wrote this is a smart guy. Whoever come up with this, uh, I guess, got a vision. He's secretly the heart and soul of our team. Ben Ryder deserves a promotion. It's crazy. They said 2017. They weren't really specific. How cool is it that George Springer is on the cover? They could have picked anybody for this. And sure enough, we win the World Series, and the guy on the cover wins the MVP. That's crazy, man. That's uh, destiny, man. Can't really write it up any better. Can't argue with him now. Sports Illustrated got a lot of things right, but what he couldn't have known was Carlos Correa would have been engaged on the field after game seven. Will you marry me? Oh, my God. Will you marry me? Oh, my God. I didn't see it till I got back to the hotel room, and I go, dude. Why didn't you tell me? And he just had this big smile on his face. To propose to his girlfriend after a World Series on live TV, that was amazing. Carlos said it, dude. He said it in the, you, 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 can't, you can't write that up. You've got to win the game to be able to do it. And we won the game. They couldn't predict that I fall down the stairs after game five. I was so happy coming out of the stairs, I fell down. And next thing I knew, I was on the floor. He showed you. He showed right in front of the media. It's gone. This one still is. <laughs> They couldn't have known we'd have two catchers that were twins. At the beginning, in spring training, I had a hard time telling them apart. And it takes you a beat to figure out which is which. <laughs> Maybe they're separated at birth and we don't know it. Even in Fan Fest, people are coming up to McCann asking for Gaddis's autograph, going to Gaddis asking for McCann. No brothers from a different mother. They couldn't have known we'd have a DH as nearly as old as the skipper. <laughs> no, I don't know if that's bad for him or bad for me. In one season, I think Beltran impacted people's careers on this team. He's a pro's pro and a guy that will forever be indebted to. And they couldn't predict that Charlie Morton would throw the last pitch of the World Series. He's the most humble guy that I've ever played with. And I don't think anybody deserves him more. I think forever our lives are changed. 
And I think the city deserved it. I don't want to say we're legends, but the team is legendary.